Whether you go around the block or around the world, you'll find some amazing plants and animals here on planet Earth. And we'll be traveling far and wide as we tour the Earth's ecosystems. Ecosystems are places where plants and animals interact with each other and everything around them. The soil and air, sun and rain. All of these things together make up unique environments that scientists call ecosystems. There are many different kinds of ecosystems, including grasslands, deserts, oceans, and streams. But today, we'll be visiting some of the leafiest, greenest of them all, the world's forests. Forests. You've probably taken an afternoon hike through a forest and maybe even live near one. But what exactly are forests? Forests are ecosystems in which trees are the major life form. And forests are very important to the rest of the world because they are oxygen suppliers. The plants in the forests actually release oxygen, which can then be used by other life forms, like us. As we explore, we'll find that while forests around the world have some things in common, they also have plenty of differences. But where can we learn about the different types of forests? Believe it or not, the zoo is a great place to start. I love to visit the zoo. It makes me feel like I visited about a hundred different places on Earth all in one day. Seeing animals from all over the world sure does get you thinking about what an amazing planet we live on. Today, we're looking for some animals from forest ecosystems. And maybe we just found one. Hey, what kind of bird is that? Where does it live? What does it eat with that big bill? I'm a toucan, and it can be a real jungle where I'm from, the rainforest. The rainforest is the wettest of all the ecosystems. Rainforests get up to 1,200 centimeters of rain each year. Rainforests are located in areas near the equator. The rainforests of South America are the ecosystems that toucans like me call home. But you won't find us flying around. This bill makes that a little tricky. We usually just hop from branch to branch. Our bill is very handy, though. It helps us collect our favorite foods, like fruits and nuts. And you can't beat the rainforest for finding those. The trees of the rainforest are the toucan's habitat. If you think of an ecosystem as a neighborhood, a habitat would be like the house where an animal lives. A habitat needs to contain food, water, shelter, and a place to raise young. For toucans, the trees of the rainforest fit the bill. Rainforests contain the most types of plants and animals of any ecosystem on Earth. Why are there so many? The hot, rainy weather makes rainforests ideal places for growing things. In the rainforest, all of the plants and animals live in different layers of the forest. Like people live on different floors of an apartment building. Some of the layers are very high, made up of the tallest trees. Some are in between, and others are at ground level. The very tallest trees in the forest tower over all the others. There are only a few of these real giants. Below them are other trees that form a canopy or roof over the lower layers. This is the sunniest part of the rainforest, and it's a safe place to be. So it's the part where almost all of the animals live. There are parrots, lizards, and sloths, to name just a few. Many of these animals can spend their entire lives in the canopy, like monkeys. They're right at home traveling along a kind of treetop highway. They swing, cling, and leap along using their tails like extra hands. Even the young ones lose no time getting used to their niche or job in the forest. They eat fruits and nuts and drop the leftovers on the ground. You could say they don't have the best table manners, but their mess becomes someone else's meal. 
The forest layer below the canopy is called the understory. It contains young trees and leafy plants that can tolerate low light. Many have large leaves to catch whatever sunlight beams through and whatever rain trickles down from the canopy. Because this layer is shady, you have to look closely to see the spiders, insects, frogs, and snakes that live among the plants here. They're also hard to see because they are camouflaged or hidden by the colors and patterns on their coats. And since the rainforest is a colorful environment, some animals' camouflage is colorful, like the bright feathers of the parrot. Camouflage helps these animals blend in with the dense vegetation to avoid being spotted by predators or hunters. One of the world's most famous predators is a snake called the boa constrictor. It lives in the highest layer of the forest because that's where it finds its food. These kids are visiting a rainforest ecosystem in Puerto Rico. Esteban Terranova is a scientist who works there studying snakes. Snakes are an important part of every ecosystem they inhabit. They are cold-blooded reptiles with smooth scales. They're very soft. They're not slimy like some people think. We have a special kind of boa that only lives here in Puerto Rico, and it's called a Puerto Rican boa. It's an animal that goes out at night and likes to eat small animals and birds. And you can find them on top of trees. Because many of the snakes are in danger of disappearing, different programs have been created to study them if we know them better, if we know the way they behave, if we know what they like to eat, if we know what places they like to go, we can protect them better. So far, we've talked about the highest level of the forest, made up of the tallest trees. We've also seen the canopy level that is like a roof over the forest, and the understory, or lower level, where smaller plants grow. Now it's time to take a look at the lowest level of the forest, the forest floor. Only a small amount of sunlight makes its way down here, so the forest floor is pretty dark. And since plants need light to grow, there are very few plants in this layer. But there are plenty of decomposers, insects, mushrooms, and bacteria. These decomposers have an important niche in forest ecosystems. They break down dead plants and animals that have fallen to the ground. The forest floor is also where trees are anchored in the poor rainforest soil. The soil is poor because there are so many plants, and all of them are taking food from the soil. It's like everyone raiding the refrigerator at once. The soil has a hard time keeping up with so much demand. Hey, a bear! Where does it live? I know it can't live in the rainforest. It would be too hot in that thick fur coat. I am a bear, a black bear. And they're right that I don't live in the rainforest. But if these kids want to see where I'm from, they better be ready to do some hiking. <laughs> the ecosystems that these bears live in are the deciduous forests, which are found in cooler, more northern parts of the world than rainforests. The trees in the deciduous forests have leaves that fall off and regrow each year. If the leaves stayed on, the trees would lose moisture that they need for the winter, and snow and ice might build up on the leaves. Then, if there were a strong wind, it might snap the tree's branches right off. In spring, when the winds die down and there's more sunlight, higher temperatures, and more rain, the leaves begin to grow again, and spring bursts out all over. Most deciduous forests have four seasons, winter, spring, summer, and fall. In the summer, they often get as warm as 30 degrees Celsius, or 86 degrees Fahrenheit. But temperatures often drop below freezing in the winter. Deciduous forests get up to 200 centimeters of rain each year. Like the rainforest, the deciduous forest has layers. At the top are a few very tall trees that tower above all the others. 
Just below are the trees of the canopy. The tallest include maples, oaks, birches, beeches, and hickories. There aren't as many types of plants and animals in deciduous forests as in rainforests, but there are a lot. The canopy is where most birds make their homes. Only a few are year-round residents, like woodpeckers, eagles, owls, and hawks. 70% of the bird species fly in for the spring and summer. These birds travel hundreds or thousands of miles from their winter homes in warm tropical forests. This is called migration, when animals travel to find better feeding or breeding grounds. When they reach their summer homes in the deciduous forests, some dine on a rich assortment of berries, some on insects, and still others on seeds or nectar as they breed and raise their young. In the fall, they turn tail and fly south again to warmer climates and more plentiful food. The next layer of the deciduous forest has young trees struggling to grow in a place with less sun. The trees that succeed will become the tall trees of the canopy. There are also shrubs and bushes in this layer. They provide food for birds and animals in the form of berries and leaves, and shelter too. The floor of a deciduous forest is covered by a thick carpet of leaf litter, and the soil is rich and fertile. As in the rainforest, dead and decaying leaves and trees provide a feast for decomposers. We've learned that rainforest soil doesn't have a lot of nutrients in it, and now we're going to find out why with a little experiment. You'll need four house plants, two each of the same type and size, two containers of water, some potting soil in a large spoon, some cheesecloth, two large containers or buckets, and a notebook to draw or write your observations. To begin, Lay a piece of cheesecloth over one of the large containers. Hold it in place. Then, put a lot of soil on the cheesecloth. Now, carefully pour about a liter of tap water through the soil, making sure all the soil gets wet. When the water has finished dripping through, remove the cloth and place it over the second large container. Now, pour the water from the first container through the soil in the cheesecloth. Repeat this two more times. You'll notice the water becoming darker. That means the minerals and other nutrients that were in the soil are now dissolved in the water. In the rainforest, all these nutrients get washed away and cannot be used by the plants. We'll pour this rich water into one container and we'll water two of our plants with it. This will represent water from the deciduous forest. The other two plants will water with plain tap water, which does not have nutrients in it. This will be our rainforest water. What are your plans for several weeks? Making notes on how well the plants are doing. Which ones are growing better? The ones that are getting dissolved nutrients or the ones getting plain water? You should see that some of the plants are growing faster and looking healthier. The ones getting plain water are more like rainforest plants. They get few nutrients from the rainforest soil. Why? Because the nutrients are washed away by all the rain. Many animals make their homes in the deciduous forest, like deer, which dine on leaves, shrubs, fruits, and nuts. Some deer, however, become food for other animals, like mountain lions. These big cats are also known by the names of puma and cougar, and have a very important niche or job in the forest. Mountain lions hunt and eat deer as part of their diet, and without them, there would be too many deer which would eat too much of the plant life needed by other animals for food and shelter. Hey, a bald eagle. Where does it live? What does it eat? It doesn't look bald to me. Quite right. I happen to have a gorgeous head full of white feathers and a tail to match. I'm what's called a raptor, a bird of prey. Eagles, hawks, and owls are all raptors. Raptors eat other animals, usually rodents like mice, but we bald eagles prefer fish. The 
world's northern woodlands are the habitats or homes of bald eagles and some of the black bears we met earlier. They are like neighbors. These woods are known as coniferous forests. Another funny name for a forest, but one that's also pretty easy to remember. Coniferous forests are filled with cone-bearing trees like pines that have needles and cones. So think coniferous, coniferous. And raptors are just one of the animals that live in coniferous forests. Coniferous forests are found in Asia, Europe, and North America. Because of their location, the temperature in coniferous forests frequently drops below freezing in the winter, which could bring lots of snow. But the coniferous forests are usually fairly dry. They only get up to 125 centimeters of rain or snow each year. Like deciduous forests and rainforests, coniferous woodlands grow in layers, but they only have two, a canopy and a forest floor. The canopy has tall trees, mainly pines, firs, and spruces. The very tallest are the giant sequoias, which are found in the western woodlands of North America. Conifers are often called evergreens because they keep most of their green, needle-like leaves throughout the year. The needles hold in water in an ecosystem that gets very dry in the winter. Conifers' cones contain seeds from which new trees can grow. Conifers are hardy trees that are well adapted to this cold, snowy climate. Even their triangular shape allows snow to slide off easily so it doesn't weigh down the branches and maybe break them off. As in the other types of forests, the tall trees of coniferous forests create a lot of shade on the forest floor. But some plants do well in this environment, like mosses, ferns, blueberries, and mushrooms. Wherever there's a gap in the trees and some sunlight shines through, these plants make the most of it and grow. The animals that live here are especially well adapted to the long, cold winters and lack of food. They cope in the same ways as animals of the deciduous forest. Some are adapted to grow heavier coats, while others migrate or move to a different place for the winter. About 300 species of birds migrate to the northern coniferous forests for the summer, but only around 30 species stay for the winter. The forest is dotted with lakes, swamps, and bogs where insects and fish breed. For the migrating birds, it's a feast. Without the insects, they would starve. So many birds mate and raise their young in the north, then return to warmer areas for the winter when the food supply here starts to dwindle. The animals that are year-round residents of the coniferous forests include wolves. They live in packs or extended families, and they have very strong family ties. Pack members will often care for each other's young when a pup's parents go off to hunt. Moose are also year-round residents of the coniferous forests. The species native to these forests has been nicknamed the spruce moose. Males can weigh as much as a large horse. Moose's big bodies help them retain heat, and their thick, hollow hair is a great insulator. It's like wearing an extra layer of clothing. The plants and animals of the rainforest, deciduous forests, and coniferous forests are all amazing. But many people are concerned about the future of these forests. Forests around the world are being cut down for wood that's used for fuel, houses, furniture, and paper products. They're also cleared to make room for crops and grazing lands. We need those things but we also need living trees to help keep the air healthy and clean. It's all right to harvest some trees, but when too many are cut down, that can cause problems around the world. So many people are working hard to find ways to save the forests. Scientists are also interested in keeping our forests healthy 
because many of the medicines we use today originally came from forest plants. Many other plants may provide treatments and cures for disease, but the forests are so full of life that scientists haven't yet discovered all of the plants and animals, let alone how they may be useful to us. So they are hurrying to study these fascinating ecosystems before it's too late. There's a lot you can do to help keep these beautiful forests standing. If you recycle paper, fewer trees may need to be cut down. You can start a recycling project at home or in class. And once you have that up and running, you can talk to teachers and students in other classes about starting a recycling program for the whole school. What a strange animal. Look at its long tail. What's it called? It's called a kinkajou, and it's a member of the raccoon family. Can you figure out where its natural habitat is? Well, it has sharp claws and a long tail. I'll bet those are good for climbing in trees. So it must live in a forest ecosystem. Great, but can you guess which kind of forest? His coat doesn't look very heavy, so I think it would be cold in the winter in a deciduous or coniferous forest. I'll bet he lives in a rainforest. Correct. We've learned a lot about forest ecosystems today. We've seen how living things, like plants and animals, and non-living things, like soil, air, sun, and rain, all interact with each other in these unique environments. As people, we also fit into the world's ecosystems. I'm glad we humans are at home, just about anywhere on Earth. That way, we get to see animals from all over the world. That's for sure.